All right. So we are still in the open by design. Uh, what we want to do is to discover how to use a roadmap to plan our work and find contribution for our open project. And we're gonna also look at a few examples uh, as we saw for open canvas. So open leader design, and now we're gonna move to a bit about empowering others to collaborate within the open communities. And when we think about empowering others, it's a lot about knowledge sharing. Keeping with this framework, we are at this part. We are still designing for participation and inclusion. We want to think about what the project's identity is and what are ways people uh, interact with my project. The intention behind this is to create an, a welcoming space, uh, make a good impression so others know that they are in the right place and you know that you're communicating well. Explain how one can get involved in your project and let them know what's happening next so they can decide if this is the right project for them to be involved in. So what goes into the roadmap? There are three things that you would be thinking about that would go into the roadmap. First is project summary, and you actually creating this welcoming space, uh, telling people how to get involved and what is the timeline. Timeline may be changing quite a lot, but it is still a good idea to tell them what you are at, what would you be doing next? So this project summary and welcoming space would require would be required so people who are visiting your project can get oriented with where your project has information. What kind of resources do you have? It is important for them to understand where they are. Uh, often in a new project, the biggest blocker is that the newness of that space, and you want to help them to feel familiar with the space that they are in. Having the project summary as the first page. Uh, so if you all are familiar with uh, GitHub, you would be calling it as a readme, but if you are familiar with any other product, you would always see a summary page, which gives an overview of the project. It helps to give a clear focus on when writing the rest of the roadmap. Second is how to get involved. This is about your contributors. Uh, it's possible that some contributors are available to jump in right away, but they can do that only if they know what is the task in hand and if the skills that they have is actually appropriate for your project. Some people might not be available right now, but they know about your project and want to come back and they should also know how they can get involved when they're coming back. So you need to have a documentation that you they would be able to check out. This is the star of your roadmap, the timeline. It organizes tasks to complete your project around milestones. This is, again, we're gonna come back to all these concepts in the future calls, but these are for you to think about already. How do you see your project in the next weeks or so? How do you see your project uh, at the end of OLS or how do you see it afterwards? So, you need to think about milestone. These are significant turning points or events that will move the project forward. So this is also allowing you to assess what the progress of your project has been. You can have a status goal, for example, a feature release or a minimum viable product. Uh, you can also be hosting an event, for example, giving a talk or attending a hackathon or hosting a community call. You can have time frame as well. You can define your milestone in three levels. You can have a short term, you can have a medium term and a long term goal. Uh, therefore, anyone who's available right now can get involved in short term. People who wanna come back, they would be looking at medium and long term milestones. Then just telling the milestones is uh, not enough. You are the project lead and therefore you need to define what kind of uh, direction you want to take and these direction can be clarified by listing out the tasks that these milestone will involve. Um, you can, and these are iterative process again, right? This is, this is not something that we're expecting you to complete right away, but this is the process you want to uh, implement in your project. So you would want to list tasks by stating what needs to be done, what does the success look like, and the success in terms of uh, what would complete a project milestone, one single milestone. You don't need to think about a full project at the moment. You also wanna share pointers to get started. And these pointers could be skill building resources, or it could be about contribution guideline. 
It could be anything that can help your contributor to feel that they are in a position to get involved. And you also need to state why this task is important and reinforce your vision. And this is very useful because these contributors are there to support your project, not work for you. So you don't need to look at them as someone who will complete a task, but they, you want to involve them in building a project and make them feel as part of your journey. So how to share the roadmap? We, you can have a file called roadmap.md, which is marked down, but you can start as well with a simple document, which can be the first page of your project if you are thinking of building a website. In a GitHub, it could be a readme file. Uh, you could also create issues um, and these issues can have uh, labels. For example, you can look at these two examples. Again, as I said, you're gonna come back to these slides and you, you will go through it slowly one by one and you will be able to look at these examples. So I'm going to open one example because we have some time. So this is a roadmap that Open Knowledge Maps uh, on Open Discovery have written. This is their road, this is what it looks like. They have a motivation of what this project is about. They give an introduction to open knowledge maps and they list out all the resources that they have developed, what kind of services they have, what kind of infrastructure they have, what kind of community engagement plan they have, what openness means to them, what do they think their sustainability of the project would be like, and what is the governance. So this is, a lot of them might be quite high level for a new project, but if your project has existed for a while, you might wanna also think about up to that detail. And then you have a work plan. And let's look at the work plan. In the work plan, they have clearly clearly written what, what are the main three pillars for them are. They explain each of them. For each of them, they actually uh, provide what kind of infrastructure that they are using. And they have gone into as much detail as it is required for them to ensure that their contributors know about their project. So that this might be quite detailed. Over the next few weeks, we will also share uh, some examples with you in the Slack or um, in the notes. So please have a look at all those. And I'm sure you might have your own ideal project in mind. It's a good chance for you to go back to those projects and look at how they're doing it and why they're doing it that way. Okay, so with that, I'll say um, that we can finish this part